All right, guys, so jumping straight into the session. As you all begin to open your eyes, the first light of dawn gently filters through the gaps in the wooden planks of Elder Rattlebone's hut, casting a soft, diffused glow across the room. The remnants of the night's chill linger in the air, a subtle reminder of the darkness that had occurred in that foreign world, miles beneath your feet. So what would you like to do? Guys, Missouriel came to me again in a dream. What did he want from you this time? I'm not quite sure. It was strange. It was almost like he came purely to answer some of the questions he knew I had. He spoke of destiny, choices, and the greater schemes at play, hinting at his own role and ambitions. So, pretty much more of the same then? It was as if he wanted to justify his actions, or maybe sway me to see things from his perspective. Yeah, it certainly seems like just a repeat of last time. And then, there was this bombshell about Asmodeus being his grandfather. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. I was questioning his ability to be able to control Vecna and Orcus the way he wants to, then he basically just showed me his ace up his sleeve and was all like, yeah, Asmodeus is my grandpappy. Dropped it so casually, as if mentioning an old family connection at a dinner party, not revealing a lineage tied to one of the most powerful beings in existence. Jesus, well, we knew he was powerful, but I've got to be honest, that was the last thing I was expecting to hear. Makes you rethink the playing field we're on, doesn't it? If he's playing cards with gods, where does that leave us? Still reckon I'd kick his ass if I wasn't all beat up before the fight like last time. No, you wouldn't. I mean, I know you'd give it your best shot, but that best shot would last all of a second before he wishes you out of existence. So if this Vizuriel is Asmodeus' grandchild, who is his mother? Joe, do I have any knowledge about the lineage of Asmodeus? How about you give me a religion check, Mike? I'm going to give myself an inspiration for this. Sweet. Oh, okay, so that's a 17 total, but I'm just gonna add my inspiration anyway. Ooh, that's a seven, so my new total is 24, Joe. With a roll of 24 on your religion check, Might, the infernal hierarchies and their lineage come to the forefront of your mind. Asmodeus, the overlord of the Nine Hells, a figure of immense power and cunning, is known to rule with an iron fist, his influence stretching across the plains. As you sift through the annals of your memory, a specific detail about his lineage captures your attention. Glacia, Asmodeus's daughter. Glacia, a figure of formidable power in her own right, stands as one of the most influential figures of the Nine Hells. Her story is one of ambition, strategic acumen, and a complex relationship with her father. Glacia, once the favorite among Asmodeus's children, was not content with mere favoritism. Her ambition drove her to seek greater power and influence. She is known as the Hell's Princess, and after a series of political maneuvers as cunning and ruthless as her father's, she ascended to rule the sixth layer of Hell, Malbolge. So, considering Vizuriel's reveal about Asmodeus being his grandfather, we can only really assume that Glazia might be his mother. It's a logical deduction given her prominence. But that's just it, isn't it? An assumption. For all we know, Vizuriel could come from a lesser known branch of Asmodeus's lineage. The guy's been around forever. Who knows how many offspring he has. But if Glazia is indeed Vizuriel's mother, that could explain a lot about his, let's say, complicated motivations. Oh my God, I've just had a thought. Could it be, do you think he's actually aiming to claim the throne of hell for himself? It wouldn't surprise me at all if Glacia was nudging him towards such a monumental ambition. It's a chilling thought but it aligns with the scale of power we're dealing with here. If Glazia is pushing Vizuriel, we might indeed be looking at a play for the throne of hell itself. Considering Vizuriel's strategic mind and his apparent lineage, it's not out of the realm of possibility. The ambition to control hell would require immense power and cunning, both of which he seems to possess in spades. But to challenge Asmodeus himself, that's not mere ambition, it's sheer madness. We're talking about the Lord of the Nine Hells, a being whose power is unparalleled, whose very essence is woven into the fabric of hell itself. Asmodeus isn't just powerful, he's a force of nature, a being so formidable that the combined might of all the deities might pause before engaging. His command over infernal legions, his cunning that has outplayed gods and mortals alike, his wrath that could unravel realms, this is power on a scale that, that nobody here could ever truly comprehend. And let's not forget, we're talking about the father of lies, a master of deception whose very nature defies trust. If Vizuriel's attempt was discovered and foiled, the repercussions would be unimaginable. Asmodeus's retribution would be swift, devastating, and absolute. For Vizuriel to even consider such a move, he would have to be not just certain of success, 
but supremely confident in overcoming odds that would terrify any sane being. But that's just it. Maybe Vizuriel is all too aware of the insanity of a frontal assault on Asmodeus. It's not just ambition, it's a calculated gamble with the highest stakes. Imagine circumventing the blood war, leveraging Orcus and his demonic legions to march straight to hell's heart. Or perhaps more cunningly, enticing Asmodeus himself into the mortal realm. So where does Vecna fit into this grand scheme? Well, an army of the undead, under his command, could serve as the perfect distraction or a formidable force to weaken Asmodeus's defenses. We're just assuming a lot of things here, though. There's no real point thinking too much into everything right now when there's a high chance we're just totally wrong anyway. Yeah, and even if that was all right, there's literally nothing we could even think about doing against it. Our best bet is to just ignore all that for now and focus on the task at hand, the goblin camp. So what's the plan? Are we still aiming for an insurrection? Yeah, it seems our best shot. Disrupting the goblin camp from within could minimize casualties on both sides. Precisely. If we can sow enough doubt among the ranks, we can turn them against Snagglegut without a direct confrontation. It's about leveraging their trust or lack thereof. I say we give them a reason to doubt Snagglegut's leadership. A few whispers in the right ears might just do the trick. But what would we be whispering? And whose ears would we be whispering them into? What if I transform myself into Elder Rattlebone? Um, all right, then what? I could start by telling a few key figures that Snagglegut no longer has the best interests of the Horde at heart, and we are replacing him with Gubba. I like it. Let's roll with that plan. By all accounts, Rattlebone should be trapped in the Underdark. Well, at least for a little while longer. We know she had access to Plane Shift, but I'm pretty sure the only way she could use that to get to us is if she went to another plane of existence first, then used it again to come back here. And that will buy us another day at least, I think. Yeah, you've got a point, but... She might try hoofing it back here on her own, but that's a big if right there. And the Underdark's a huge place. For all we know, that teleportation circle we used to get there could be miles upon miles away from anywhere close to us rather than just straight down beneath our feet. And you're right about the plane shift. If she's got to hop between planes to get back to this camp, that's not only going to chew up time, but also a hefty amount of her resources. So, yeah, it seems like you could be right there, Trunnell. We might just have a window of opportunity here, a day's grace, give or take, before she could even think about throwing a wrench in our works. But let's be quick about it. The last thing we need is for her to burst back in here when we're in the middle of all this and catch us with our guards down. So we just need to make sure we're quick about it then. Oh, damn. So we're actually doing this then? But what if one of them big brutes decides Gobba's not fit to lead and wants to squash me like a bug and Snagglegut? If he gets even a sniff of this, he might come barreling down himself or send his nastiest to do the job. Oh, don't go telling me that you're starting to get cold feet now, Gobba. No, not cold feet. It's just scary. You know, all this talk about taking over, leading a revolt. It's been nothing but words up till now, but standing here on the brink of actually doing it can't help but worry they're gonna kill me, one way or another. I mean, it's Snagglegut and his crew we're talking about, and me, I'm just Gobba. Never thought I'd be leading anything, let alone a rebellion against the biggest, baddest goblin in the Horde. I ain't backing down. Don't you worry about that. It's just, the closer we get to doing this, the more real it all feels. And that realness, it's terrifying. That's not gonna happen, Gobba. You're gonna be with us at all times, and if he or anyone else wants to get to you, they're gonna to have to go through me. They're gonna to have to get through us. We've got your back every step of the way. Thanks, Boss Tronald. Look, Gubba, when we first stumbled across you, we might have pegged you as just another goblin caught up in the chaos. But you, through every word and action since then, have completely turned that notion on its head. You've shown us, not just told us, that you're cut from a different cloth. You've got a heart that wants what's best for your people. And that, my friend, sets you apart, elevates you beyond the rest. That alone makes you a leader more genuine and worthy than Snagglegut or any of his cronies could ever dream of being. It's not about the might of the sword or the fear you can instill. It's about the vision you have for a better tomorrow for your kin. And that vision, it's what's going to rally them to your side. You're not just aiming to overthrow Snagglegut for the sake of power. You're doing it because you see a path to a brighter future for your horde. And that, Goba, is what truly makes a leader. Goba, listen up. 
You need to sort your confidence out right fucking now. Ain't none of them gonna believe in you if you don't start believing in yourself. It's as simple as that. And we need to get you some new drip. Seriously, you're gonna want to look the part. Can't have a future goblin chief looking like he's been rummaging through the leftovers, now can we? Oh, and let's not forget, Tronald's already set you on the path to becoming a great wizard goblin. You've got magic in your fingertips, and with a bit of practice, who knows how far you'll go. Between all of your words of encouragement, Goba seems to undergo a remarkable transformation. The apprehension and worry that once clouded his demeanor have been swept away, replaced by a newfound sense of determination and positivity. He stands tall as his eyes alight with purpose and enthusiasm. All right, you lot got Goba all fired up now. I'm ready to take on the world I am. So what's the game plan, eh? Where do we start with this grand scheme of ours? We're gonna spruce Gobber up first. Get me some proper chief-like drip. Gotta look the part if I'm gonna be the big boss, don't I? Or are we diving straight into the sneaky bits? Starting those whispers, stirring the pot a bit? Just point me where you need me. Let's go get you some new clothes first. It shouldn't take us long. Then we can head back here and start bringing certain members of the camp back one by one. All right, Joe. So I guess we all head out of Elder Rattlebone's hut and towards a trader of some kind, assuming they have any traders here. Roll me an investigation check, whoever is taking the lead on this, just to see how quickly you can find what you're looking for. Sweet. So that's an 18 total, Joe. I want to cast Disguise Self now, Joe, transforming myself into Elder Rattlebone. Are you sure you want to do that now? I mean, how long does it even last? I've got to do it now, man. I mean, there's a bunch of goblins and whatnot that have most likely figured out I escaped and are searching for me. So if I wasn't going to disguise myself as Rattlebone, I'd need to do it as someone else. But what's the point of doing it as someone else? Might as well give our group some clout when we're walking around camp. That's true. And I suppose having her presence around us won't hurt. Exactly. All right, guys, you make your way out of Elder Rattlebone's hut. The journey to find a trader takes you all about 10 minutes of cautious walking through the winding, uneven streets of the goblin territory. As you progress, the local denizens, goblins, ogres, and other creatures of dubious nature cast curious glances your way. Their stares linger, filled with a blend of suspicion and opportunistic calculation, as if debating the risk and reward of confronting your group. Some of the bolder ones even seemed to size you up, contemplating whether you'd make a good meal. That is, until their eyes land on the figure of Elder Rattlebone walking among you. The effect is immediate and pronounced. Eyes widen in recognition or fear, and those who were once boldly assessing you now hastily divert their attention elsewhere, giving your group a wide berth. Their earlier contemplation of engaging with you vanishes, replaced by an eagerness to distance themselves as much as possible from the infamous Elder Rattlebone. Whispers ripple through the crowd, spreading the word of your presence and the powerful, feared figure in your midst. Finally, you arrive at what appears to be a merchant's setup. The merchant, a goblin with a sharp eye and an even sharper grin, operates out of a stall that is a chaotic amalgamation of goods and trinkets. Items of dubious origin and questionable utility hang from every available space. This goblin merchant, clad in an assortment of mismatched garments that speak more to necessity than fashion, surveys you with a keen interest, his gaze lingering on Elder Rattlebone with a mix of respect and fear. Hey there, do you have any fancy garments available? We're looking to outfit our friend here, and I point towards Gubba. The goblin trader, rubbing his hands together, replies with a sly grin, Plenty, plenty, what exactly are you looking for? Hey Gubba, what are your favorite colors? Gubba thinks for a moment before his face lights up. You know, I've always fancied red and black, like the fiercest fire burning through the darkest night. All right, cool. So, have you got any fearsome looking wizard robes in red and black? Something that would make Gaba here stand out. The trader raises an eyebrow, his curiosity piqued. Fearsome wizard robes for little old Gaba? Why is he need something so grand? Before anyone can respond, I jump into the conversation as Elder Rattlebone. That's none of your concern. Bring forth what we ask for. No more, no less. Unless you're truly interested in our affairs, in which case, perhaps you'd like an invitation back to my abode to discover firsthand. Oh, damn. Give me an intimidation check, Mike. Does he get any advantage seeing as he's disguised as Rattlebone? You know what? Sure. I'll give you advantage on it. 
I rolled an 18, so that's a 27 total. Holy crap, dude. Your modifier is a plus 9? Yeah, because of my expertise. Although, I do wonder if there is a Withers in this world. I feel like my stats are a bit whack. A respect would be cool. What do you say, Joe? I say that you'd have no way of knowing that. And even if it was possible, it certainly wouldn't be as easy as paying some dude 100 gold pieces. Oh, well, it was just a thought. Anyway. The traitor, visibly unsettled, scrambles to comply. Yes, yes, of course. Red and black wizard robes, fearsome and fitting for our distinguished goblin friend, Gubba. One moment. He begins quickly sorting through his merchandise to accommodate the request. After a tense few moments, filled with the rustling of fabrics and the traitor's muttered contemplations, he emerges from the depths of his collection with a garment that immediately draws all eyes. The robes he lays before you are nothing short of magnificent. Crafted from a luxurious material that seems to drink in the light, its red hue vibrant like the heart of a flame, bordered with black as deep and absorbing as the void itself. These beauties came into my possession in a manner most extraordinary. You see, Snagglegut himself encountered a wizard, and the poor fucker was all out of spellsies, completely defenseless. Couldn't do much but stand there as he met his unfortunate end. The traitor shakes his head, a mock solemnity in his expression. Snagglegut, not one for the finer things, didn't see the value in these robes, but I, with my discerning eye, recognized their worth immediately. Bought them off him for a mere 150 gold pieces. He spreads the robes out for better viewing. And now, Elder Rattlebone, I offer them to you for the very same price, 150 gold for robes that could make any goblin, or anyone for that matter, look fearsome and commanding. The robes themselves are a masterpiece of tailoring, the red fabric rich and vibrant, alive with an inner fire. The black trim and lining provide a striking contrast, evoking shadows that dance and flicker. What truly sets the garment apart, however, is the exquisite dragon embossment that adorns the back and sleeves. Crafted with astonishing detail, the dragon's scales shimmer with a subtle iridescence as its eyes gleam with a lifelike ferocity. The creature seems poised to leap from the very fabric. What do you think then, Goba? Do you like them? Goba's eyes widen in awe as the traitor unveils the robes, his gaze tracing over the intricate details with an almost reverent admiration. I loves them! Look at them! The way the red and black swirl together, like fire and smoke dancing in the night. And these dragon embossments, they're fierce, they are. Makes me feel like I could take on the world. Just standing here looking at them. But, but I don't have that kind of gold to splash. Never had much use for gold. Not until now, that is. Something like this, it's worth every coin, sure. But Gaba's pockets aren't exactly overflowing. Well, we're going to get them for you, so don't worry about not being able to afford them. Damn. I've never seen Tronald so eager to splash his money for someone else before. Well, I did say that we were going to get them, not me. We can take it out of the group stash. Of course. Oh my, dearie. You're wanting to charge me for them? And here I thought, given our unique relationship, you'd be ever so happy to assist me in our little endeavor. Roll an intimidation check for me, Mike. With advantage again? No, not this time. Whilst he is still very much afraid, a traitor is a traitor and gold is gold. Oh, damn. So I rolled a four. So that's a 13 total. Why did you have to try push your luck, man? The traitor, clearly nervous but trying to hold his ground, responds with a cautious respect. Well, Elder Rattlebone, it's not that I wouldn't want to help truly. It's just, well, these robes, they're a rare find. Cost me a pretty penny, they did. I'm just looking to get what I paid for them is all. Oh, I'm just pulling your leg, my sweet. I wouldn't dream of strong-arming you out of your hard-earned gold. It's refreshing to see a goblin with such dedication to his craft and commerce, a rare gem you are. Tell me, what is your name? A goblin of your caliber should be recognized for his contributions. You're a model goblin in our society, setting a fine example for all. The traitor, visibly relieved and a touch flattered, straightens up, a newfound pride in his stance. The name's Skrizzle, Elder Rattlebone. Just trying to make my way like anyone else. Well, good work, Skrizzle. Joe, I hand over 150 gold and say, 
Thank you for these beautiful garments. Scrizzle's hands hesitate momentarily as they touch the gold, a sum he likely seldom sees, but then he swiftly recovers, his business acumen taking over. He carefully hands over the majestic red and black robes as he says, Right, right, Elder Rattlebone. If there's anything else you ever need, you can be sure I'll give them to you for the same price I got them at. And remember, Scrizzle's got everything you might need. Just a shout away, I am. The pride in his voice is evident, bolstered by the transaction and the recognition from such a formidable figure. This exchange, more than just a simple transaction, has cemented a bond of sorts, a promise of future dealings and mutual respect. All right then, Joe, we begin to walk away. Nice work there, Mike. It could be handy having him on our side in the future. I'm not too sure how yet, but it could be. Yeah, that was well played. So I guess it's time that we start planting the seeds. Does anyone have any ideas of where we should start? Well, we should probably steer clear of any of Snagglegut's closest cronies. It'll be too risky to tip our hand to them first. Gaba, eagerly nodding in agreement, adds, Yeah, yeah, those lot of thick as thieves. Won't take kindly to whispers of change, they won't. Right, so we need someone influential enough to sway opinion, but not so close to Snagglegut that they'd run straight to him with what we're saying. What about Grizzletooth? He doesn't seem to be part of the inner circle, but he certainly commands fear and respect among the guard. What do you guys think? Ugh, that lumbering oaf. Well, he's tough, no doubt about that. And I suppose the guards listen to him. If he starts questioning Snagglegut's leadership, others could follow. But if he even so much as looks at me the wrong way this time, it won't end well for him. Easy there, Rar. Keep your sword in your sheath. I don't have a sheath. I just strap it to my back. We'll keep it there. I'm making no promises. All right, Grizzletooth it is. We approach him carefully. See if we can nudge him towards our way of thinking. Without rousing suspicion, of course. Yeah, we're going to need to be subtle. Offering him a vision of the future where his position is one of even more security and power. Everyone has ambitions, and we already know Grizzletooth has his. We just need to push them in the right direction. So what? The plan's just to walk up to him and start telling him all this in the open? No, we approach him, or should I say, Might will approach him as Elder Rattlebone, telling him that she wishes to speak to him privately in her abode. He won't refuse, and it will get him out of reach from prying eyes and ears. Yeah, that sounds good to me. All right then, Joe. We make our way to the entrance of the goblin camp and attempt to locate Grizzletooth. All right. As you all make your way toward the entrance of the goblin camp, the buzz of activity and the chaotic hustle of goblin life surround you. The camp is alive with the sounds of bargaining, squabbling, and the occasional burst of raucous laughter. Approaching the entrance gates, your eyes are immediately drawn to a particularly imposing figure, Grizzletooth. He's hard to miss, seated comfortably behind the gate, indulging in a feast fit for a king, or in this case a goblin of considerable influence. In one hand he grips a full roasted pig, tearing off chunks with a voracious appetite that matches his reputation. The other hand wields a barrel of grog, as if it were a mere cup, from which he drinks heartily. Around him, envious gazes from other goblins linger on the lavish spread before him. As you draw closer, Grizzletooth catches sight of your approach, and a hearty laugh escapes him, a big smile spreading across his face. It seems for a moment as if he's about to extend an offer to join his feast. However, his welcoming demeanor shifts abruptly as his eyes land on the figure of Elder Rattlebone among you. With a clumsiness that belies his earlier confidence, Grizzletooth attempts to conceal the roasted pig, awkwardly trying to hide it behind him while simultaneously placing the barrel of grog on the ground with a thud. The sudden change in his behavior is almost comical, a transparent effort to present a more composed and less indulgent image in front of the feared Elder Rattlebone. Hey there, Grizzletooth. How are you doing, buddy? Grizzletooth, recovering from his initial surprise, responds with a rough chuckle. Hey there. I'm doing all right, mate. You know, just here. Hard at work guarding the camp and whatnot. He leans in a bit closer, his voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. But, uh, do you mind me asking what you're doing with Elder Rattlebone? Not every day you see her strolling through, especially not with a crew like yours. Got something big brewing, have you? Oh my dear Grizzletooth, do you truly think you can whisper secrets right under my nose? I can hear every word, darling. Roll a deception check for me, mate. How come this one needs a deception when the traitor didn't? Because Scrizzle has most likely never communicated with Elder Rattlebone before, and there's a high chance that Grizzletooth has, making it more important to align with how Elder Rattlebone sounds and acts. Oh right, well that's fair enough. 
That's a 23 total, Joe. All right. Grizzletooth seems completely caught off guard by Might's impeccably delivered reprimand and the sharp tone of Elder Rattlebone. He scrambles to regain his composure. Oh, I wasn't meaning to be rude, Elder Rattlebone. Honestly, I, um, I, I apologize. Got a bit carried away with me own curiosity. Didn't mean to overstep or nothing. How can I be of assistance to you? Anything you need, just name it. I'm all ears. The reason for my visit is none other than you. Yes, you have caught my special attention, and I wish to have a word with you. In private, of course. My humble abode shall be our rendezvous in, let's say, about 30 minutes. I wouldn't want to interrupt your well-deserved respite, and that should provide you with ample time to savor the rest of your splendid meal and that robust brew you were so fondly clasping. But my dear Grizzletooth, do try not to dally. It would be most unfortunate to keep me waiting. We wouldn't want that, would we now? Right you are, Elder Rattlebone. It'd be my utmost honor to meet with you. I'll be right on time, not a minute late. Good. All right, Joe. I head back to Rattlebone's hut. Okay, so it takes you all around five minutes to get back to the hut, so that gives you around 25 minutes before Grizzletooth arrives. Hey, Mite. Why did you suggest 30 minutes rather than straight away? Wouldn't it have been better to do it all within the same cast of your disguised self? I really don't mind using an extra spell slot. My thinking was, if Grizzletooth is here for any decent amount of time, there would be a high chance that my disguised self runs out. Then we would be screwed. So I'll just recast it around five minutes before he arrives. That's great thinking, Mike. Well, I am nothing if not a thinker. So do you guys want to do anything in the 25 minutes you're waiting? Yeah. I want to give Lunaria a call with my sending stone. I want to see how she's doing, see if she's managed to find her family. That'd be really nice, Trundled. Thank you. Does sending even work across different planes of existence? You know, I'm not too sure. Joe, does it? It does, but there is a 5% chance that the message does not arrive. I'll have you roll for it. And if you roll a 1, then it doesn't arrive. Oh, right. Cool. Okay. So I want to say, hey, Lunaria, I hope you're well. Did you manage to find your family? We all miss you. There are no hard feelings here. Roll a d20 for me, Trundled. Sweet, so that's a five. One second. Hello? Hey, Amelia, are you watching the stream right now? Yeah, I am. So do you want to reply to Tronald's sending spell? Ooh, yeah, sure. All right. Hey, Tronald, thank you so much. Yes, I've reunited with them. They're, they're so happy. I owe you everything. I'll never forget you guys. Thanks for that, Amelia. No problem, Joe. All right, I'll catch you later. Peace. That was nice. Yeah, it was good to hear from her. It's a shame she's no longer with us anymore. I mean, she's not dead, just gone to another realm. I'm sure we will catch up with her again one day. That's definitely a possibility. All right, guys. I think that's where we will wrap up this session. It leaves us in a good spot to pick up next week. See you later, guys. <laughs>